you guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Inflow Podcast. If you're new here, my name is Ani B. This is Nadine. And today we're going to be diving into a beautiful conversation about how to deal with self-sabotage. Because I know that you deal with that, girl. I deal with it and so does she. So we're going to go over some of the ways that we handle self-sabotage because listen, I definitely struggle with that. I know you do too. Phil is the person that we named our... um mean person that's in our head if you watched our last episode we were talking some mad shit on phil yeah so we named our little gatekeeper our uh voice in our head phil so if you hear us refer to him that's because that is what we named him (laughs) hashtag fuck phil and we will be you know talking about what we do to combat those mean voices in our head or the part of us that maybe doesn't believe in us so much Mm -hmm. right okay so we're just going to dive into it today we don't have any notes we're just going to have a conversation like we normally do and just go over what we do in these times yeah okay so i mean this last week in itself for me was full of self-sabotage mm. it was sabotage full sab- self-sabotage central Sa- self-sabotage central yeah i love that. <laughs> welcome to my full sabotage central anyways um <laughs> nadine dealt with some major self-sabotage this mm. week um mm. I- it wasn't that I got in the way necessarily of like things I feel like I've gotten to the point where I'm like even though I feel bad about certain things or even if I'm being super neglectful to myself like I have the discipline that it takes to consistently keep doing stuff Mm -hmm. um but it doesn't make them fun you know when you're when in the motion of things like even if I you know am filming a podcast or thing or you know I'm going to work or I'm going to the office or picking an outfit like all the all these things are not fun when Phil is just moving his mouth too much I agree agree. so yeah I mean this last week I feel like I definitely um struggled with some some gnarly self-sabotage it was a lot of mean talking saying that I wasn't enough and you know not not even allowing myself to do things at the extent that I was actually able to do them like I'm much better when I'm in a space of like I'm happy. I feel good about myself. I feel inspired today. Mm-hmm. I feel fun and funky and fresh. And my outfit looks good. But yeah, yeah. Because happiness is our job. You know, Literally. if we aren't making our happiness a priority, then the things that we actually have to make as priorities are not going to be as fulfilling for us. So if you don't take time in the morning, for example, to make yourself feel good and give yourself some good energy, then when you go to work, you're already in a bad mood and it just kind of trickles on throughout the day and then throughout the week. So if we start to shift our perspective and make The idea that when we feel good, we attract more. And when we feel good, we are more productive. Mm -hmm. Then that is how you can stay in that consistent flow state. And so I think that self-sabotage kind of keeps us from that. Um, But a way that you can really combat that and and stay away from those self-sabotaging thoughts is just by spending more time with yourself being present. And we talk about this all the time and how important (laughs) it is to have morning routines and sit with yourself and you know also the importance of presence and i think that when you practice that on a daily basis self-sabotage can lessen but listen it's i'm not gonna lie to you like there is always gonna be times where you're gonna doubt yourself and you're gonna try to keep yourself small but the only reason why that happens is because you're trying to protect yourself from something that scares you okay and we talked about this before this is who we refer to as phil Mm -hmm. the gatekeeper in your subconscious mind who will convince you that you shouldn't do anything out of your comfort zone because it will hurt you and maybe you'll fail and maybe you'll suck at it and whatever the hell phil has to say it's bs Mm -hmm. okay it's bs the only point of that is just to keep you in a state of comfort yeah we're moving from that we're mm-hmm. we're expressing ourselves in our fullest all the time we are never yes. going to allow our minds and our heads to determine what we actually end up doing in the future okay so Absolutely. this is how we combat that so this morning i heard, started to hear a little bit of chatter but because i've been doing some self-reflecting and some more you know sitting with myself and actually analyzing the thoughts that were going on i was mm-hmm. able to separate myself and become the observer mm-hmm. and now i'm looking at these thoughts and i'm like man no wonder i've been feeling so horrible the last couple of you know days or so because i haven't really been that nice to myself yeah but now that i'm hearing these voices in my head and i can like just separate them from who i am i'm like okay you're cute 
you're gone though yeah. i actually just killed you today so <laughs> you're, you're done silenced. yeah you've been silenced yeah. um which is is totally fine i mean we're never going to be at a constant t- we're never going to be at a constant high we need those weeks we need those days that are you know that are a little bit you know, not necessarily negative but are a little bit challenging you mm-hmm. know um that way we yep. can f- when we, it's time to feel our best and time to feel really amazing thoughts and really amazing things we really get to hone in on them and love them and really cherish them so yeah um self-sabotage i feel like stems from not feeling good enough like not feeling like you deserve the things mm-hmm. that come to you and you do deserve all those wonderful things you do deserve to make as much money as you want you do deserve to pour into your passions you do deserve to wear the hottest outfit in the room you do deserve to um have your makeup set really good you do deserve to take up time for yourself like and take up space yeah and take up space like when you're talking to people and having conversations i know that i'm typically the, the more quieter one um and it's because i i know i'm not a quiet person like mm-hmm. i know i could sit and talk to you for hours but i i choose to do that because i've made of course agreements with myself that mm-hmm. i'm more laid back i'm the observer i just watch that's not true Mm, i like to be i like to be involved absolutely and um a one way to look at it is in terms of these challenging times or in terms of having self-sabotaging thoughts because sometimes it can feel really frustrating like i'm doing all this work i'm taking care of myself i'm doing everything i'm supposed to do but why am i still struggling with these negative intrusive thoughts but i need to remind you that without these challenging times the good times wouldn't even exist because if everything was constantly good it would always be neutral versus if the good times were high and then the bad times were low it actually gives good a meaning right and a definition and if it wasn't for the lows the highs wouldn't exist so just be grateful for for the fact that we get to experience challenge and we get to you know look at things that make our mindset stronger and take from that what we can and and add that to our our armor and add that to our tool set because I think that the more that we go through and the more challenges that we face head on the stronger that we get and I think that's a really beautiful thing um yeah and in terms of that voice in your head man it can be really pesky and really annoying and I definitely doubt myself sometimes but I think that you just have to create new agreements with yourself that get you into a new state of mind for example when Nadine and I were talking the other day about how you've been feeling and and everything that's going on with you I mentioned to her that it seems like she was holding on to previous agreements that she made with herself that are no longer resonate with who she is right now the agreements that she was holding on to were for the old Nadine the Mm -hmm. old body right the person who (laughs) was maybe less developed than you are now had less knowledge and wasn't as insightful and and uh you know in tune with your being Mm -hmm. and now it's like your new computer is trying to run old software and so yeah it's not going to work its best you know you have to wipe the fucking slate clean and start over make new agreements when you told me that when uh, dude when when i was sitting out there because you know me and ani have these profound conversations all the time but man i was feeling so stuck in the mud and she just sat there and was like dude you're a new computer you're running (laughs) on old software i was like damn that was pretty hot (laughs) (laughs) it's true it's true it's like an iphone you know you have to like keep doing software updates yeah and i think that it wasn't that you felt bad it wasn't that there was anything in your life that was making you feel bad it was like everything's so great right now so why do i feel so like bad sometimes when you things start to feel like they're going really really good Mm -hmm. that's when i feel like my my inner voice starts to get even louder because it's Mm -hmm. like oh things are going things are going great you know what that is all of a sudden i don't want things to be great anymore it's because change is coming yeah that's so why it makes me uncomfortable yeah because the self-sabotaging voice in your mind its job is literally to keep change from happening mm-hmm. so the closer that you get to change the more like intense it gets mm-hmm. the stronger it gets right that the more fearful it gets so it's gonna try to mess with you as much yeah. as it can because it knows that if you keep doing what you're doing you are going to get closer to change and that is what it hates so you have to just be mindful of what's actually happening what these self-sabotaging thoughts are doing what their purpose is and just be smarter than them because you can look and become the observer of your thoughts like what you just did today mm-hmm. and be like i see what you're trying to do 
but you're not going to do it successfully. Exactly. And what's funny is that like we are like ever evolving butterflies. So like these mm-hmm. agreements that we've made with ourselves that we're like so honed on keeping mm-hmm. are just over. Like they're mm-hmm. just they're they outgrow, they outdo themselves. Like um what's an agreement that I've made with myself that I'm done with? Probably the one that I, like I said like that I'm timid and that I'm, you know, not really outspoken and that I'm really in the back I'm not. I'm very out there. I'm very outgoing. I'm very fun. I'm very, mm-hmm. you know, I tell jokes a lot. I'm very big. My space is big. And I think everyone should feel that way. If you're ever in an environment where you feel like you need to tone down yourself or you need to make yourself look less, you're self sabotaging your time of having so much fun mm-hmm. and really being the outgoing person and starting conversations with people that are probably going to bring something so enlightening to the table, yeah. you know? And forming connections with people that you never thought you could form connections with. So Mm -hmm. what are other ways that people self-sabotage in their life, do you feel like? I think that uh, comparison is a huge way to self-sabotage and comparing yourself to other people in your Mm -hmm. space, in your industry, your friends. I think that that's a really common way to self-sabotage. This is actually a whole topic that we're going to do a full episode on because it's so important to talk about. But in a nutshell, um, that is basically your limiting beliefs trying to scare you and tell you that you can't do it or you're not as good as this person or just bringing things up for you and I think that the way that I look at it is if I'm ever feeling a a feeling of comparison or a feeling of I don't know what the word is maybe envy or something like that you have to start seeing everyone as an extension of yourself Hmm. because when you see other people as an extension of you you can't you're not envious of yourself you know Mm -hmm. that this person is an extension of me we share the same life force we are the same and so to see somebody else succeed it should make you feel really good as if you're also succeeding you know and so I feel like when I see other people doing good I almost use that as like power and as like fuel for myself to keep going further and further and in terms of like seeing yourself in a or seeing comparison in like your career space or something other people's success should be so motivating to you like if they can do that i can fucking do that and so this is basically like proof that Mm -hmm. it can happen so i just use it as motivation and inspiration at the end of the day so also like if we were to you know say that there are so many people who are doing a podcast that has to include with self-improvement we would have cut ourselves in the bud right there obviously we know that there are so many people out there doing what we're doing but you know there's nobody that's going to bring to the table what you bring you know Mm -hmm. and so you really have to just bring out the best of you to anything that you do without listening to this you know this limiting beliefs that you're not capable of doing it and that you don't deserve to feel success you don't deserve to to be out there and your face would be out there and your voice to be out there because genuinely I really do believe that although we have an abundance of you know knowledge that is out there we also have an abundance of listeners we have abundant of people who are only going to be able to tap in and tune into your frequency the one that you're vibrating out and so someone is not going to be able to resonate with someone that's as you know big as a therapist or as small as like somebody who has no idea what they're talking about but they're going Mm -hmm. to specifically fit in this category and hear your voice and hear what you have to say and they're going to be totally touched by it so that's another uh, point that I wanted to bring up to the table as far as self-sabotage you have the ability to break this cycle that may come up after a while you know those repetitive thoughts of not feeling good enough Mm -hmm. um and you're going to be able to break those cycles much quicker at first it's going to be kind of like it's it's like a retraining you have to retrain your mind to believe Mm -hmm. you're capable of these things you have to say okay I once used to act like this when this happened and so show up for yourself so when I'm being put in predicaments where I'm having to ask myself am I this person still am I going to you know self-sabotage the situation like I used to or am I given the perfect opportunity now to really show myself that I no actually longer believe in those agreements that I used to make with myself before Mm mm-hmm yeah it's all a choice and I think that the only reason why it doesn't feel like a choice sometimes is if we are unconscious of it you Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. like if you aren't aware that you're just following in the footsteps of something that no longer you know is who you are then that's the problem but if you become aware of what's happening and you can see it as 
a rebuild, like a rebuild, a reboot or a reset of your identity and of your energy, then that's really all you can take from that. It's a really powerful thing to have that knowledge. Do you know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. that for a lot of people, um, you just kind of, it's, it's normal to just sit with your thoughts and to just kind of feel like this is something I'm always going to have to battle. The voices in my head or like, I'm always going to put myself down. But I feel like we self-sabotage and we come up with a lot of reasons why we shouldn't do something or why we're not good at something when we haven't been taking enough action. I feel like when you take action and you're putting in your best foot forward every single day and you're giving it all that you've got, you won't have as many self-sabotaging thoughts because you'll know that, you know what? I did do what I said I was going to do. I did show up for myself that day and I did put in the effort that I had at that time. And so when you have that proof that you did what you said you do and that you are who you say you are, there's really not that much that, that those thoughts can do to you. You know, mm -hmm. you start to build armor and you start to get stronger every day. And so just, uh, I guess really the big thing is just to take action on, on your goals. And we're going to dive into another conversation in another episode about self-discipline because that is a really good connecting point of, um, you know, doing what you say you're going to do and getting things done because when you start to build up that proof, your self-sabotaging thoughts get weaker and weaker. I completely agree with that. What's cool about that is that it takes very little to get the ball rolling. Like mm -hmm. there's this book that's called just like, just make your bed. I don't know exactly by who it's by, but it, the idea is, is that, you know, when you get up in the morning and the first thing you do is just like to make your bed, you'll start to realize like how quickly other things will follow with that. Mm -hmm. um, and a way that I want to tie that in to what we're talking about now, as far as self-sabotage is that I feel like there are moments in my life where I used to wake up in the morning and immediately my first thought be like oh like I have to go to work or, oh, another day so right off the bat you are self-sabotaging you're setting yourself up to have mm -hmm. this like energy of the day that's just revolved around you waiting till it's over and you cannot yeah. do that anymore mm -hmm. and another thing that I, I find that's really funny about self-sabotage is that it comes up a lot in relationships mm. you know sometimes we meet really amazing people and we're afraid to be vulnerable you know and not fully open up and it can kind of like create a distance between two people and so you're actually for not sure. allowing somebody to fully access you and to know you for who you are mm -hmm. because you know you don't want someone to see you for who you are yeah. and so you're you're ruining a potential relationship there mm -hmm. when I think of self-sabotage in that regard I think of being in a position in my life where I, when I was going through something, I feel like I was really good at distancing myself from everyone. Um, and so that is a really good example of self-sabotage. It's like you need help and you want help, but you're doing the exact opposite, which is like removing yourself from the situation and like not giving yourself what you need. And so if you do that, <laughs> this is a little reminder that just be mindful of what it is that you need. Really sit with yourself and ask yourself, okay, in this moment, what do I need? What will make me feel better? And even if you don't want to do that, you need to do it. Like, okay, have you ever been sad? And you know that if you just stop listening to all this sad music and you just like kind of pick yourself up or you just get out of bed like with all and the you just take a shower, <laughs> you just like do something, like you know it will make you feel better, but there's that part of you that just really doesn't want to do it. Yeah. It has resistance. Mm -hmm. You have to be stronger than that and you have to fight against that urge to stay where you're at and to sabotage yourself because our job in life our most important job is to be happy and we need to be pursuing that happiness every single day and so if we are in our own way with that these sabotaging thoughts are just going to get stronger and stronger and I know that that's not what you want because you're trying to become the best version of yourself and reach your dreams and accomplish new heights so we kind of need to kick this one ass a little bit mm -hmm. so that's one way to do it <laughs> self-sabotage is not going to be anything you ever have to worry about as long as you really just hold your vision see yourself mm -hmm. succeeding see what the end goal is see yes. what it is that you actually want for yourself and if you don't see it write it you know mm -hmm. sit there and really journal prompt 101 
what do I see for myself in the next year? What do I see for myself in the next five years? Mm -hmm. What do I see for myself in the next 10 years? Mm -hmm. And just let yourself write and go into your relationships, your careers, what your outfit, what your, (laughs) how you feel, what your hair looks like, Uh what kind of dog you own, anything, right? Mm -hmm. And just, just verbal diarrhea on this pages and just let out everything that you possibly can Mm -hmm. and tell me that you will not feel so good after when you look back at all of it and be like damn as long as I hold this vision it actually can be possible absolutely yeah and then your and then your thoughts that fill voice in your head really can do shit yeah it's just quiet you got to take take the weapon away from it like Mm -hmm. take its power away from it Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so I want to circle back really quick to your when you touched on relationships because mm-hmm. recently I learned about heart walls and how we naturally build up heart walls when we're scared or we've been hurt in the past and, and that is a form of self-sabotage in my opinion um, because we do this thing where we like to armor ourselves up, right? Like we've been hurt before, we've been heartbroken, maybe someone betrayed us in the past and it almost becomes so hard to let anybody in again. And I think that we constantly say, my guard's up, my walls are up. I have I have strong walls all the time and we're continually making that true for ourselves. And so when you when you have heart walls up regarding your heart, because your heart's your, your life source, right? Your heart is what gives you life and it is actually the center between your physical connection with your spiritual non-physical connection and so being able to have access to your heart at all times is so important especially when you're trying to elevate your energy and you know step into your divine feminine so when you have heart walls up unfortunately energy is not able to go out nor come back in so when that happens it's like you are kind of guarding yourself from the world and it's a it's a really sad thing you know like you're not allowing your love to pour outward and you're not able to receive other people's love pouring in and so I think when you're in that state when you know that your heart walls are really up and you're really guarded it's definitely a really easy time to self-sabotage and just believe that everyone's fake men suck like relationships fuck love like you know it's really easy to just convince yourself that there's no good in the world when in reality you're just trying to feed yourself that story so that you can stay safe but yeah. it keeps you very unsafe, actually. Dude, 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 the reality of that. Because, I mean, I I don't even like to talk about myself too much, but, like, the, the reality is that I've been in relationships in the past where these people would actually tell me that they genuinely cared and loved for me. But because my heart walls were up from being hurt before, mm-hmm. I honestly probably wasn't able to access them. So a lot of my big, like, moments were, like, do you care about me? Do you even really care about me? Do you do they even really love me? And it's, like, the, the reality is, is that maybe if I had just stopped self-sabotaging everything that's going on lower the walls released everything Mm -hmm. I would have access to being able to feel all the love that was actually coming my way whether it's Mm -hmm. from my friends or my family or relationships that I'm in romantic relationships that I'm in it all matters it all connects Mm -hmm. and so you'll start to notice that you'll even attract more love and connectedness once those things are just yep washed away yep and you'll be able to actually admit it out to the world too like you'll be able to feel like oh my god i feel so good and you smile at someone or you like tip the barista a little extra like you know when your heart is open you're able to reciprocate that with the world and that is how we keep the world spinning and that is how we keep everyone happy and the world a a safe place so yeah that is like a really really big thing is lowering your heart walls and that connection with self-sabotage is almost at the center of it and I think a lot of us don't realize how important that is but um okay so let me give you a little tip if you feel like okay my heart walls are up I know that to be true and I don't know what to do about it this is something that you can do so number one sit with yourself and intuitively ask yourself what has caused my heart walls to go up what are the reasons that these are here most often you will find that you know the answer right away but perhaps you have been lacking the attention that this specific thing needs and that goes into healing traumas and stuff and dealing with that Uh, but sitting with whatever event happened to you or whatever feelings you've felt in the past that have caused these walls and these guards to go up sit with them and process 
process so that you can start to lower your guards and realize like okay one bad relationship or one uh you know incident with my business or one person who bullied me for making a youtube video whatever that situation is it is not going to be a consistent occurrence okay you have to replace your old feelings with things with new ones so if you have heartbreak in the past and you know that's what you're holding on to and maybe that's the reason your walls are up you have to replace your idea of love with a new experience a new relationship whether that's a beautiful friendship or you know maybe trying to date somebody that is different that will actually love you and show you what it feels like to be loved i completely agree yeah there are really moments in my life where i feel like i was in relationships that um you know but but that's not their fault necessarily what i was going to say was i found myself being in relationships now in my life like with my friendships and stuff where they could see me for what was happening especially in the beginning when i was in the really early stages of my healing journey Mm -hmm. i was having a little bit of trouble of being able to communicate you know like whenever things got really overwhelming for me i would you know take the self-sabotage way and either blurt out and be super um wrong obviously and super loud and try to control the situation and then burst out before anything else could happen right so that's one way of doing that or I can also self-sabotage the situation by being extremely quiet and shutting down and not saying anything Mm. and not having anything really being shared but what I noticed was that as long as that I was actually always in the process of changing and in the process of evolving and wanting more for myself and wanting more for the people around me Mm -hmm. honestly i've noticed that people are actually really giving they'll they'll Mm -hmm. sit with you they'll see you for who you are and they'll ask you okay so what is it how can we come to a solution about this how can we make this conversation actually steer into a way where we found some compromise and that was super like whoa what is going on i have people in my life that actually are willing to fully sit with me and have a conversation till the end Mm -hmm. that's dope i don't think (laughs) i've ever fully had that so notice that even when you're even when you can't execute the situation even when you don't have the right words to say even when you know you're you're caught up in your mind and everything there as long as you have the intention to fully sit through a conversation and listen with your ears Mm -hmm. instead of waiting for the next thing that comes out of your mouth Mm. you are going to notice that people are willing to be more giving and will give you that attention and will give you that space to open up and you'll realize it's actually much safer out here than you thought yeah oh i love that that is beautiful you have to replace your previous things with new things like replace your idea of friendship if it's a bad idea with a new beautiful friendship place your idea of what a relationship looks like with the new beautiful relationship it's all about experiences and making new agreements with yourself about what is true and what's not because the truth is you create the truth right like (laughs) what you create and what you believe is true so you know you are in control of that so just be aware of the things that you say to yourself the things that you say to others really try to look at the world through your heart and speak through your heart and just be really authentic and loving when you spread that love outward it's much easier for you to receive it back so yeah open up your heart chakra people I'm going to leave you with some affirmations that you would say to yourself, you know, if you ever feel like you're stuck in a loop Mm -hmm. that um, is like a self-sabotaging loop, right? Affirm to yourself every single day. Mm -hmm. I am constantly changing. I am not the same person that I was yesterday. I am totally capable of stepping into anything that I want to step into in this Mm -hmm. very moment. I am beautiful. I am kind. I am forgiving of myself and others. Mm -hmm. I am acknowledging that there's space for me to grow. I am totally capable of succeeding in all of my endeavors and anything that I want for myself. Mm -hmm. I have a couple. Go ahead. Uh, So a couple other affirmations for if you feel like you're self-sabotaging or you just feel like you're talking down to yourself. I am in control of my thoughts. I am in control of my emotions. I am not my emotions. I am not my thoughts, but I do have control over what I think and how I react to the world. You are worthy and you deserve anything that you want in this life. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is your birthright. So thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Inflow podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends, leave us a rating. 
anything like that you can also follow us on tiktok and instagram at the inflow podcast you can also submit an official request for an episode if you'd like using the link in our bio and with all that being said we love you so so much thank you for being here with us on this journey we will see you monday 6 a.m eastern standard time as usual don't be late don't be late bye bye Thank you.